Hello YouTube, this is MK Vine, and I'm making a video on the Immaculate Conception of our Blessed Mother Mary. And for those of you who are not familiar with this Catholic doctrine, you might be wondering what is the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception means that Mary, at the moment of her conception, by the grace of God, was preserved from the stain of original sin. And the reasoning behind this is to show that uh, Mary had to have a sinless nature in order for Jesus to inherit a sinless nature. If um, Mary had a sinful nature, then Jesus would have inherited a sinful nature. And we know this cannot be because uh, Jesus was God incarnate and God and sin cannot exist or coexist with each other or cannot even mix with each other. Now the question is, is there a scriptural principle for uh, is there a scriptural principle for um, God creating human beings without sin? And the answer is yes. And this is seen in Genesis where God created Adam and Eve without sin. So if, if God created Eve without sin, why couldn't he also create Mary without sin? And who is greater, the woman who is the instrument through which sin came into the world? Or the woman who is the instrument through which salvation came into the world and who is called uh, blessed among all women in fact um, this is what Elizabeth says she was filled with the Holy Spirit blessed are you among women and Mary herself says all generations will call me blessed so clearly we see that Mary is the greater woman it is greater than Eve and by the mere fact that Mary bore God in her womb, I think that would make her the greatest of all women. <clears throat> so if we look at, um, if we now turn to Genesis 3 verse 15, um, it says the following, The Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head, and you will strike at his heel. In this verse, um, the offspring of the woman includes the Messiah, Jesus. And we know that Jesus will have enmity between himself and Satan. Um, and we also know that Jesus is going to conquer Satan. So this is uh, called the Proto-Evangelium, meaning the first good news, which is, um, it points to Jesus. But if you notice, the verse also says, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Who is the woman here? Well, if if this is a passage referring to Jesus, then it must be a passage referring to his mother, which is Mary. So Mary also had enmity between herself and Satan. So what is the definition be, uh, of enmity? Enmity basically means t um, hostility between enemies. If Mary ever sinned, that means that she would be on the side of Satan not against him they would not be enemies they would be friends if uh, she actually sinned so this is another passage which shows that Mary had to be sinless in order for her to have enmity between herself and Satan another passage that supports uh, Mary's sinless nature is Luke 128 where the angel Gabriel said Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. If, if Mary was full of grace, full of the very life of God, then there is no room for sin uh, to be inside her. There is no room because she was full of grace. Um, again, grace is the very life of God. It cannot coexist with evil. It cannot coexist with sin or impurity therefore Mary had to be sinless because again she was full of grace but I, I want to show how God and sin are incompatible if we look at um, like Deuteronomy and Jeremiah we see that the presence of God always imparts holiness again Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 3 also, 
God who dwelt in a special way in the Holy of Holies imparted his pureness around the ho the surroundings of the Holy of Holies such as the tabernacle and the sacred tent again just the presence of God imparts holiness on its surroundings um, and for example um, the ark was so holy that it could not be touched on one occasion when the ark was about to fall over Uzziah reached out to steady it uh, to prevent it from falling down he was immediately struck dead and this is from 2nd Samuel chapter 6 verse 2 to 7 um, and also the man of Beth Shemesh, Shemesh also um, they died when they merely looked inside the ark 1st Samuel 6 uh, chapter 19 or verse 19 so they died just by looking inside the ark that's how holy the presence of God is um, likewise the high priest on Yom Kippur the Jews used to tie a rope on his ankle um, in case he were to be disobedient somehow uh, when he entered the Holy of Holies if he was disobedient or whatever uh, he would be struck dead immediately and the rope was served as to um, pull him out from the Holy of Holies because if anyone went inside to go get him they would be struck dead and again this is just showing the holiness of God um, on on Mount Sinai when God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses he warned the people not to touch the mountains or its borders um, un under the penalty of death in fact not even the animals were to touch the ground under the penalty of death and this was because of God's presence there and the point is to show that God is so holy and so pure that sin or any impureness cannot coexist with God it cannot even approach God right it, it cannot even approach God that, that's how holy God is <clears throat> How then is it possible for Mary to bear God in her womb, which is far more intimate contact than uh, with God than Mount Sinai or the Holy of Holies? How is it possible for her to bear God in her womb and not be struck dead? Like I said, sin and God cannot coexist with each other. Mary had to have a sinless nature, otherwise she would have been struck dead instantly. Um, in the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God and His written word dwelt in a special way. Likewise, Mary can be seen as the Ark of the New Covenant, in which God and His incarnate word dwelt in a special way.